timber harvesting on steep slopes. Tough work for man and machine. We spent a day filming forestry contractor Hari Polieros and his team at work in Semmering in Lower Austria. The men have set up a mobile tower yarder to carry out some forest thinning near Breitenstein. The trees are felled with a chainsaw, then brought up to the road by a carriage for processing. Forestry contractor Hari Polieros started out transporting timber then, just two years ago, he and his brother Franz got into the logging business. They bought a TST Junior Tower Yarder, the smallest model available from forestry equipment manufacturer Tristel, which, as Hari explained to us, is the ideal machine for this kind of work. We don't need anything bigger to harvest timber of this size, and since there are more big tower yarders around than these smaller ones, we reckon there'll be plenty more of this work for us in future too. That was our main reason for buying it. TST Zalga Eta Trustel GmbH, better known as TST Forestry, is a small family business from Turnitz in Lower Austria. The company currently offers five cable yarding systems with corresponding carriages. Each machine is custom built to cater for individual requirements. The operating principle is the same for all cable yarders. To understand how it works, let's take a closer look at a run. Hari can control the yarder by radio from the excavator. He uses the automatic target control to send the carriage back downhill to the exact position of the last loading point. This is where the choker man takes over. He also has a radio remote control. Today, this is Philip's job. He puts the choker round the log, attaches it to the skidding line, then presses a button to start reeling it in. The trunks are hauled up to the carriage, which transports them automatically up to the road. Then Hari takes over again. Once he has the carriage in the right position, he lowers the timber and releases the choker system remotely without having to get down from the excavator. Then the carriage is sent back down while he processes the trunks. The carriage is suspended from the skyline and pulled up and down by the two other lines. The carriage drum has three compartments. Beside the pendulum is the skidding line. That's purely for carrying the load. Then the whole back line. That's the smaller or thinner cable which pulls the carriage back down because the carriage here is going up and down. Then in the middle is the main line which pulls the loaded carriage back up. These two lines are always under tension and they simply pull the carriage back and forth. Pulling the whole back line pays out the skidding line and winds in the main line, and vice versa. When the load has been hauled up to the carriage, the skyline clamp opens and the disc brake re-engages to prevent the drum from spinning. So now, when you pull the main line, the carriage, with the load suspended from it, travels back to the tower yard. Active traction in both directions makes work easier, especially in flat sections and very dense stands. Like here, where we're doing the first thinning. When the carriage reaches its target position, it clamps itself hydraulically to the skyline. At the same time, a disc brake on the cable drum is released, allowing the drum to spin. Pulling on the whole back line pays out the skidding line and winds the main line back into the carriage so Philip can easily pull the skidding line over to the harvested timber, a simple but extremely effective solution. The tower yarder here is working with a yarding length of 200 meters, although up to 500 meters is possible. With a pulling force of two tons, this machine is ideal for first and second thinning operations, which make up the lion's share of Polyros's work. When they have to fell larger trees, they simply cut up the logs. One major advantage of these types of cable yarder is the gentle handling of the harvested timber, which appears to almost float out of the forest. Philip is also impressed by this process. There's no doubt that the whole operation is much gentler with the skyline. It's not like heavy ground-based logging equipment, which can cause lasting damage to the forest environment. You don't get that with the skyline, and you can select exactly which tree you want to take. You can't do that with the harvester. 
Philip has worked in forestry for 25 years, and this experience stands him in good stead. He keeps a watchful eye on the whole process because one thing's for sure, this work is not without risk. All it takes is a treetop dangling from above or a branch falling down. You have to keep your wits about you all the time. Even when you're felling, you need to keep a lookout to make sure nothing happens. While Philip controls the skyline, his colleague Marcello fells trees with the chainsaw. He's a newcomer to this work and has been on the team for just three months. A brave decision, because it's a demanding job. For me, it's the demanding Working on steep slopes is tough for me because I'm not used to it. Before I came here, I lived in the lowlands, where there weren't any mountains. But I'm getting more used to it. I took this job because I've always wanted to work outside. I trained as a landscape gardener and just wanted to expand my skills. I've got my chainsaw ticket, but when it comes to logging, I'm a complete beginner. I've got to grips with lots of tasks, but there's still so much to learn. But you pick up a lot by observing, and they're really good at explaining things. So, it's OK. The TST Junior is a compact machine with a three-point hitch for mounting on a tractor. It's driven from the tractor's hydraulics via the PTO shaft. Harry Poleros runs a 27-year-old Steyr 190, which he bought second-hand in the Czech Republic. A real workhorse, ideal for this kind of job. <laughs> <laughs> Our tractor, well, it's quite funny really because it's an ancient Eine 990 Steyr tractor with an old Sesso engine in it with an output of 190 horsepower. And that's just perfect for the Skyland because it's very fuel efficient. It can easily operate the tower yarder and it's more than strong enough to carry it as well. The compact tower yarder has a very small footprint and is quicker to rig than large mountain harvesters. It takes Poliros three hours on average to get the skyline back up and running after a line change. We have the same equipment you would get on a large cable yarder. We have four guy ropes, the skyline, the haulback line, the main line, and the skidding line for hoisting. It's got everything, but it's all a bit smaller, one size smaller. That's why it works so brilliantly. While the men move the rigging, we use the time to take a short flight. Above the treetops, a breathtaking view of the snow-capped Schneeberg is revealed. The highest peak in Lower Austria and the most easterly 2000er. Mountains over 2000 meters above sea level in the Alps. Down below, in the Adlitzgraben Gorge, you can see the Kalterinner Viaduct with its two storeys and 15 arches. It's the largest of its kind on the Semmering Railway. This imposing structure has graced the back of the Zwanzig Schilling note, so it's a familiar sight in Austria. The Zwanzig Schilling viewpoint is now a popular tourist destination in the region. Well, the Yarder is back up and running again, so let's return to the forestry workers. Hari is already feeding the first trunks through the harvester head, which is also manufactured by TST Forestry. This is the Trustel Timbernator. It can handle timber up to 60 centimeters in diameter easily, and even down to as little as 4 centimeters, no problem. The delimbing function is first rate. It might look huge, but it's an incredibly simple piece of kit and so easy to work with. The feed force is immense, and there's just one track belt, so no need to constantly fold back the rollers to access the grapples, like you do with other harvester heads. The drive motors are tidily incorporated into the head. Like I said, it's a relatively simple design. In the middle, you have the large track for the feed, the drive motors to the left and right. They both deliver a six-ton feeding force. Then we have these large grapples for sorting and delimbing, and there's a delimbing blade at the top and bottom. Then, hidden beside the head blade is the top saw, the small one, so you can trim off at the front. And down here, the big one, the main saw. If need be, you can fell a few trees beside the road. One very important thing is that the grapples measure the diameter, and this measuring wheel here measures the length. The Timbernator here is powered by a 26-ton case crawler excavator 
a very well balanced combination that Hari rarely enjoys working with. The harvest ahead is a perfect match for this excavator. The excavator doesn't just stand idle beside the cable yarder all day. We use it when timber is delivered by the tractor. Sometimes these logs are really big, and so we need it for this work too. The carriage in the TST Junior runs more slowly than in larger yarding systems. But for Poliros, it's not all about speed. It's important that the machine is always on the move. Our forefathers taught us the importance of keeping up our strength throughout the day. The aim is to work from early in the morning through to the evening at virtually the same pace. That doesn't mean working slowly from the morning onwards. No, he said a brisk but steady pace. It's the same principle with the TST Junior. It goes steadily, fast, but not too fast. That's why it's important to have good workers in the forest who understand the nature of the work and can keep up the pace all day long. Although you do have to be quick unfastening at the landing site. It doesn't matter how fast the cable yarder runs, as most of the time we only cover short distances. Over a distance of 200 to 300 meters, it doesn't need to run at high speeds. The important thing is that the speed is more or less consistent, and that's better for the machine too. Poliros manages a daily rate of about 20 cubic meters for the first thinning. With small trees like this, it's often not possible to work at a faster rate. This makes it all the more important for the contractor to keep their costs under control, because they charge by the cubic meter. The only way to do this is with efficient forestry machines. Poliros has found a reliable partner in TST Forestry. You get the machine and straight away they provide really good training. If you have a problem, which is not usually the machine's fault by the way, it's more likely the operator. That's just the way it is. That's what we have discovered. The machine actually causes very few problems. You just ring them for instructions. 99% of the time they get you up and running again straight away. They'll have no doubt done something stupid, that's all. And if not, they send someone out at once. When it comes to service and cooperation, it's just like you'd expect a really good partnership to be. Quality and outstanding service. These are the values that TST Forestry upholds, as Tina Trustel explains. We don't depend on spare part sales, thank God. That's not what we're about. We just want to create something that works, that you can rely on, that won't break down, that performs well and is robustly constructed. Our machines may be a little oversized, but we'd rather they were that little bit stronger and better so that they last. There's nothing more frustrating than standing in the forest with a machine, you've got your crew and then something breaks and you're just hanging around for one day, two days, three days. And it's the contractor that bears the brunt. It's just not on. In this industry, the machine has to work reliably all the time. And when it doesn't work, it must be repaired as soon as possible. This is why our introductory training sessions last until we are happy that the customer can handle the machine. The contractors get so much pleasure when they can get top quality results from the machine right from the start. Shop talk aside, forestry work has always been a tough job. It's physically demanding and hazardous. What are the qualifications for a new entrant to the profession? The first thing is that you must really enjoy the work. That is one of the most important things. If you like it, the rest will take care of itself. The speed will come. You'll get to grips with the machinery and everything else. But first, you must enjoy being outdoors in the open air, at temperatures down to minus 20 and up to plus 30. You've also got to keep your wits about you and work safely and swiftly. And you need to be physically fit. Those are the main requirements. Otherwise, you shouldn't bother applying. Yet despite all the challenges, Hari Poliras couldn't imagine a better job. Forestry work is in his DNA. My family have worked in the timber industry for generations, and me and my brother were brought up with it. It's part of our life. 
It's true that we both went in different directions for several years, but now we've come back to it and started our own forestry business. Chopping wood has never left us. That's how it came about. And it's a passion. You're outdoors in a beautiful place and you're creating something. It's fantastic. And when you have machinery like this, what more could you want? There's nothing more I can say, really. I think we can agree that Hari's words speak for themselves. Harvesting timber in the mountains. Tough work for tough guys. Fascinating machinery against a stunning backdrop. Viewers, if you enjoyed watching this video as much as we did, give us a like. With these spectacular images, we're now leaving the Semmering region. We're always out and about with our camera in search of more fantastic machines and fascinating topics to bring you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you don't want to miss another video.